Hey everyone, welcome to episode 2 of Cracking the CSWE. In this episode, we're going to start taking a look at sketch blocks and making chain and belt sketches out of them. Before we get started, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be reminded of future episodes so you don't miss out on becoming a CSWE. So with that out of the way, let's just jump right into the video. Sketch belt chains are basically just paths between circles in a sketch that looks like a belt. To use these, we need to know first about sketch blocks, so we'll look at those first and then make our belt chain with them. A sketch block is pretty much just a collection of sketch entities that are grouped together. This is useful if we have arrangements of sketch components that we want to use across the sketch, different sketches, and even different parts. We won't get too deep into sketch blocks and their use cases, but we'll look at how to make them. Let's make a quick square with four circles close to each of the corners. Then let's select each entity, and we can turn this into a sketch block by either left clicking and selecting make block, or going to tools, blocks, and then selecting make block. In the property manager, it shows us our selections for the entities to use, and then the insertion point. If we were to use this block in other sketches, this is the point that the block is inserted from. But we don't need to worry about this because we don't plan on reusing our sketch block in the belt chain. For example, with this sketch block, I could save it and use it in a different part by simply inserting it. Now let's delete this sketch and make a new one that will represent two pulleys and a belt. We can create a circle at the origin and another below it, defining the dimensions arbitrarily and making sure it is fully defined. Now before we create the belt, we have to turn each of the circles into its own block, so let's do that quickly. Now that we have those done, let's go to Tools, Sketch Entities, and then select Belt Chain. In this selection box, we can choose the circular blocks to use for our belt. Let's select the two blocks we created, and as we can see, a preview of how our belt will look shows up. There are a few options we have that I'll go through, and then after that, we'll get to making a slightly more complex belt and how a question might ask for an answer. In the section named Belt Members, we can change the order of our belt going through the pulleys by selecting a pulley and using the arrow. And we can flip the side the belt is on relative to a selected pulley. This is more useful for when we have more than two pulleys, so we'll wait till we get to a more complex pulley system. Then we can control the properties of the belt. Leaving driving unchecked causes the size of the belt to be determined by the position of the pulleys. However, if we make the size of the belt driving, we can select the length of the belt, which subsequently will cause one or multiple pulleys to move. For this to work, at least one of the pulleys must have a degree of freedom. Belt thickness will allow us to select a thickness for the belt, so basically the line we create is offset from each pulley by a selected dimension. And lastly, engage belt will make it so that pulley members are related to each other by their movement, like a real pulley would do. For example, if we had a center line going through each of the pulleys for visualization's sake, we would be able to see if we drag one pulley and rotate it around its pivot, the other one would rotate as well. We can finish the belt chain to see it is created in our sketch with a listed length. Let's delete this sketch to make a more complex belt chain. First, we'll make four circles and define their size and then define the position using center lines and the smart dimension tool. Then we will make them into blocks.
Now let's create a new belt. The order I select the sketch blocks in is the order the belt will follow the blocks. Again, we can change the order by selecting the belts and using the arrows to change their position relative to each other. And here, if we flip the side the belt is on for a selected pulley, we can better see what it does. We can adjust all of these settings to make the belt we are given and the belt we need to make. And lastly, to get the answer, it is quite simple. It will ask us for the length of the belt, which we can get either here in the sketch, or which we can get by selecting all of our lines using the measure tool if we need more precision. If you want a practice question for making belts on the CSWE exam, make sure you hit the notification bell so you get reminded when I post that video. It's going to be at the end of all the videos I create on the CSWE series, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching episode 2 of Crafting the CSWE. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the Combined Comment tool, which is great for making some really complex geometry. So, I'll see you in that video.